Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our service this evening from Portadown Baptist. Thank you for joining us. Um, we're in for a few treats tonight. There's a few singing items coming your way, so we look forward to those. Thank you already to Paula and Lucy for leading us in that wonderful old song, It Is Well With My Soul. And it is a great encouragement to us to know that whatever happens, that it is well with our soul, uh, because we are held in the hands of God and of our Saviour, our Lord Jesus Christ. So tonight our speaker is Kirk Kirkland, and we're indebted to Kirk for his ministry to us. Kirk will also be singing later on with his group Evidence to us, and we look forward to that. But just after I pray, Carl is going to bring a, a, a song to us entitled The Wonder of It All. So let's just now pray together and ask God for his help this evening as we have gathered together. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we have gathered together, we just thank you again for all your blessings to us. And we thank you for this technology that allows us to join together as a fellowship. And we thank you for these old hymns that can really uh, encourage us uh, in these days of difficulty. Uh, and to know that whatever happens, that we are safe in your hands, that it is well with our soul. We just thank you for our Saviour. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you that in him our sins are forgiven, that he has paid that great debt of sin that we owed, and now we are free, and we are free to worship and serve you. We're free to listen to your word. I just pray for your message to us tonight. I pray, Father, that again you might speak to our own condition. Lord, that we might be encouraged and challenged by your word. We thank you for all those that will take part this evening. I pray a blessing on them, Father. I pray that you would bless us as we have gathered together and that we might know your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, oh. 
to think that God loves me. Hello, this is Kirk Kirkland. I bring you greetings from Nashville, Tennessee in the United States. And uh, I want to thank Gareth Martin uh, for his kind invitation for me to speak to you in this way. I also want to bring greetings from my family, my wife, Julianne, also from Tim and Amy Henning, our partners in the singing group Evidence. And uh, greetings as well from our friend, Buddy Norris, who uh, came with me the last time that I was able to be there with you uh, a couple of years ago. You might remember that uh, our luggage was lost and never arrived actually until the day that we flew back here to the United States. And uh, while we were there, we had to shop for some clothes and necessities. Uh, in fact, this shirt that I'm wearing is one that I bought uh, when I was there. And uh, just as proof to you that I carry you, I carry you with me uh, in my thoughts and in my prayers every time I wear this and uh, think of you often. Um, I know that you all are suffering under these strange circumstances, just like we are here. And we know this because the circumstances have literally affected the entire world. Uh, never in our lifetimes has the world seen such an event as the outbreak of this pandemic. And truly, I believe God has our attention. Uh, my wife, Julianne, shared a quote with me from a man named Dave Hollis, who up until recently worked for uh, the Disney company, and he said this, in the rush to return to normal, use this time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. Interesting statement, right? Lots of things could be different after this, but how do you want to be different? What are the ways that I want to be different when this has passed? And I do believe it will pass. Will we be better after this, or will we be bitter? Bitter or better? I suggest that one way to start on a journey towards better would be to focus on three important facts. Um, I'm gonna share those with you in just a moment. So I want us to start with a word of prayer, and then we'll look to the scripture to find ourselves there and look for our God there and listen for his voice, and we'll proceed. Um, then I'll share those facts with you after that. Let's pray together. Oh God, my brothers and sisters across the ocean, uh, and my church here, we cry out to you. We ask you, God, to show yourself in the midst of this difficult situation, this crazy season where we find ourselves. God, we wanna see you for who you are. And I pray as we look to your word now together that you would show yourself to us that our hearts would be encouraged and strengthened by the truth that we find there in your word. God, change us. Help us to become better as a result of this circumstance, not bitter, not to be angry or upset, but to look to you as our source. God, meet us right where we are. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I have a key passage for us today, and if you have your copy of the scripture, I want to encourage you to turn to it so that we can read from it together. And uh, it'll be familiar to you, I believe, but it's Psalm 46, and it's only 11 verses, so I want to read the, the whole psalm to us and for us today, but I would love for you to be able to read along. So please get your copy of the scripture and let's look at it together. Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her and she will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar, the kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. 
Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has wrought desolations in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. I love that. So the key verse for us today is uh, verse 10 that says, Cease striving and know that I am God. Some translations say, Be still and know that I am God. I'm sure you've read that verse before, heard that verse before. But my encouragement to you today is not to be still. That's been forced upon us all, hasn't it? We are still in ways that we never wanted to be or thought that we would be. But let us not waste this stillness. My encouragement to you today will be to know that he is God, to be fully convinced of these three facts that I believe will help us navigate these uncertain days. Here's the first one. God is powerful. Notice in verse 6 of Psalm 46, the nations made an uproar, the kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice and the earth melted. And then also uh, look at verse 8. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has wrought desolations in the earth. Verse 9, he makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow, cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots. Our God is a powerful God, and he is sovereign. And I love how it says in verse 8, Come and behold the works of the Lord. Come and take a look. Look at what he's done. Our God is sovereign. He reigns and he rules he is king over the most terrible events in our history. In fact, Psalm 29 verse 10 reminds us that the Lord sat as king over the flood. Yes, the Lord sits as king forever. Our God is sovereign. He is king. He is powerful. And he still rules over all creation. He is Lord even over this world that, is, that has been completely arrested by this virus. God is sovereign over COVID-19. And when he chooses to say so, it will end. So trust in the sovereignty and the powerful nature of our God. The second thing I want to remind you of today is that God is present. I want you to see this in the psalm uh, that we've just read. Right from verse 1, a very present help in time of trouble. And then again in verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. He is with us right in the midst of this, right here and right now. He has not abandoned us, and it is his presence that should comfort us above any other truth. You know, be reminded today that the psalmist were writing songs for the people of God to sing, and so this is actually the chorus, the refrain of this psalm. The Lord of hosts is with us. Be comforted by that today. So he begins the psalm by saying that God is a very present help in trouble. But then he says later in the psalm, the Lord of hosts in verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. And then he repeats that as if it's the refrain of this song in verse 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. He is with us and that should comfort us above any other truth. God's very presence should be the thing that comforts us the most. He has not abandoned you. God is with you. Do not be afraid. Do not put your trust in your feelings. Trust the truth of God's word and his promises. He will never leave you or forsake you. By his word, which I hope you're holding right there in your hands today, and by his spirit who lives inside of us if we are trusting Jesus as Savior, and if we are a child of God, he is with us. By his word and by his spirit, he has not left us alone to walk through this circumstance on our own. He is with us. So God is powerful and he is present. But one last thing I want to remind you of today. 
you may be questioning that God is in fact with you, that he's close, that he's near to you, but you are precious to him. He is powerful and he's present and you are precious to him. I wanna take you in one more place in scripture to reassure you of this truth today. And it's in the New Testament in John chapter 11. And there we find the account of the story of, of Jesus resurrecting Lazarus. But if you remember the details of the story, you'll remember that when Lazarus was sick, that his sisters sent for Jesus so that he could come and heal their brother. But what did Jesus do? He waited where he was for a few days. He waited there, in fact, long enough for Lazarus to die so that when he finally arrived in Bethany, that there would be a resurrection and not just a healing. It was all for the glory of God. Jesus said so in verse four of John chapter 11. He said this, when Jesus heard it, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God may be glorified by it. He was surprising his disciples who thought, well, we need to hurry. We need to get there. And of course, when he did arrive, Lazarus' sisters both said to him, if you had only been here, you could have healed our brother. They had such strong faith that Jesus was the Messiah, that he did love them, that he did love Lazarus. And yet they were questioning this now. Why didn't you come? Do you not love us like we thought you did? But Jesus waited and let them feel his absence for just a moment so that he could bring a, a greater glory. Jesus wanted there to be a resurrection and not just a healing. And notice that when he arrives, the sisters go towards the grave and Jesus seeing their grief and the mourning of those around him. In verse 35, we see that Jesus wept with them. Jesus knew he was gonna raise Lazarus and yet he still had compassion with his friends and on his friends, sympathized with them, felt their pain. They were precious to him and you are precious to him. And you may be questioning, is God absent in this moment? But be reassured today, our God is near. He is present. He has promised to never leave us or forsake us. And our God is powerful. When he says so, this virus will end. It will be incapacitated. Jesus can step up and with a word, say peace, be still to this storm. And it will quiet the storm that we're experiencing in our world today. So I'm encouraged by that today. And I pray that you are as well. Even if it's not obvious, our God is near you and you can trust his promises. And he's powerful enough to change these circumstances when he sees fit. So let's pray for that. Let's ask him to do that. I believe that's right and good. Lord, would you please stop this virus from taking any more life, from making anyone else sick. But I hope in the meantime that we're learning what we need to. I hope today that you're encouraged by the fact that Jesus cares deeply for you, that you are precious to him. Let those truths, those facts comfort you today and carry you in these days, you and your families, you and your church. Let me pray this over you, your family, over Portadown Baptist, just as I would pray it over my family and my home and our church. May God bless you today. May he show himself to you in the midst of this difficult season. And may you live out your faith in such a way that our God can be seen in your endurance, in your long suffering, that he may be seen in your lives as you live out your faith in your neighborhoods and in your city and all over your country and ours as well. Be encouraged today that our God is powerful and he's present, he is near. And he loves you so deeply and you are precious to him. 
Uh, I've invited my friends and your friends, Tim and Amy Henning, as well as, of course, my wife, Julianne. We sing together as the group Evidence, and I've invited them uh, to be a part of this with me. And um, we've recorded a song for you that uh, has become really important to us over the years. We recorded an album uh, quite a few years ago now called Voices. It's an acapella album that um, we got to record a lot of old hymns of our faith that we love so much and had uh, created some new arrangements to. We have a good friend uh, named Jay Rouse that did uh, quite a few arrangements for us to sing. And one of those is of this great uh, old hymn that we call Be Still My Soul. And if you look into the history of it, uh, the melody is one of the most beautiful that I've ever known. And I've grown up playing it actually uh, in bands and orchestras because uh, the tune goes by the name Finlandia. And it was written by John Sibelius uh, back at a time when Finland was uh, struggling for their independence from Russia. And uh, he, he orchestrates that into the composition. You actually hear some strident music at the beginning of his composition. Uh, and then a few minutes in, it gives way to this gorgeous tune that represents uh, the freedom uh, that Finland came to, to know. And this tune, Finlandia, was just so beautiful. It, it really took hold uh, across the nation and even across Europe. And eventually, uh, in Germany, some lyrics were written uh, as a hymn to be sung uh, along to this tune. And then uh, eventually the words were translated into English for us to sing. And we know that as Be Still My Soul. Um, but I, I just pray that today uh, these words and this tune will encourage you uh, to be at rest, to be still, to cease striving, and to know that God is God, that he's still on his throne, and that he loves us and cares for us deeply. God bless you at Portadown Baptist. And until we see you again, Lord willing, we pray for you and we ask for you to pray for us. So we have come to the close of our time together. Uh, let's just pray together. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before you again, we're thankful for what we've enjoyed tonight. We're thankful for your word to us. We're thankful for your instruction and your word that tells us to be still. And we have thought about that over the last few weeks, about being still 
and knowing that you are God. Help us, Father, to be still. Help us to rest in you, to, to cease from all our own trying and to rest in your work. And whether that means, Father, in our own lives or as those who yet have been unsaved, we pray, Father, that we might put our full trust and our faith in the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pray, Father, that we would follow you with diligence and that we would just rest in your finished work. So, Father, we're thankful for your word to us this evening. We're thankful, thankful for this time that we've been able to, to spend together as a fellowship. So, Father, bless us. Keep us safe in this week we've entered. I pray for all those who are struggling, for all those who are waiting for appointments and waiting for treatments, waiting for procedures, and perhaps afraid and concerned of, of the events that unfold. Lord, would they know your presence and, their ble and your blessing in their lives. We just ask these things now and ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.